Hello and welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage and sitting right here is our 1970 Plymouth Duster that I am building to take to three events in September. Holly has the LS Fest, the Mo Party, and the Ford Fest. And in order to enter each one, it has to have an appropriate engine. And I'm not just showing up, I'm entering Grand Champion each weekend, which is road racing, autocross, steer start stop, drag racing, countryside cru it's, it's a lot. It's probably the most questionable thing I've ever done, but it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. And as you can tell uh, from the last time when we were welding in the US Car Tool chassis stiffening kit, it's, it's wrapped. It looks very different because we are getting it painted. And I have the outside of it wrapped because we're not painting that. I want it to look rough and ugly. I have other projects that are gonna be really pretty cars. I like the idea of something that looks terrible passing really expensive stuff. So we're actually going to go ahead and get the interior, the engine bay, the bottom, everything painted and sealed to try to stop some of that rust so we can finally start putting it together. We've got tons of really cool, exciting parts to bolt on, but I need the car ready for it. So we're gonna take a step back so you can see all of the final round of preparation that we did, all the seam sealer and final rust primering to get it ready to this point, and then you're going to uh, join me outside where we are gonna get that enamel sprayed all over this thing. Whew, that's, it's a lot of work, but we're gonna get it done. Of course, before we can do any painting of the interior, we need to go through and get all of the mouse houses out, the leftover headliner out, some of the interior that was still somehow hanging on, that really isn't usable. We had to get all of that removed. One of the easiest ways to do that is the vacuum cleaner. Got the shop vac working hard at pulling all of those things out. So before I could even think about doing any of the masking up or final paint prep work, I needed to give the car one more complete bath. Between all of the grinding and sanding and cutting and welding, lots of dust has built back up. Plus I have freed a lot of the old grime that was hiding inside this car. So while it may seem a little bit counterintuitive to go ahead and pressure wash bare metal, we're getting everything knocked off so we can clean it up and make sure all of our new coatings and treatments will stick as well as it possibly can. Now with most of the paint and epoxies I plan to use, knocking off the rough rust was good enough, but in certain areas like the engine bay, I wanted to try to make it look a little bit nicer. So I'm going through with some 80 grit sandpaper along with a wire wheel. Now the keen eye amongst you are gonna notice I am using a signature red DAQ National Detroit Incorporated dual action sander made in Rockford, Illinois, where I grew up. Now this is significant because while I was putting a roadblock together the first time, mine broke. I've done a lot of, lot of projects from Supras, high-end cars, GTR carbon roofs, to um, the entire Jeep CJ5 restoration that I did with editor Dwayne on his dad's Jeep, where we cut it all the way down, did tons of sheet metal work, and rebuilt it. So it's kind of sad, it's a tool, I can probably get it rebuilt. Um, or try to find some parts for it, but it just, it's been locking up, locking up, and now it's, it's fully shot. And my incredibly thoughtful and really good friend, Travis Bell of Celebrity Machines, the owner of the Transcon Medivac, saw that video and went on a hunt and found me a replacement. Um, he actually found one weathered about the same as mine. You know, that, that's the kind of friend to be, that's the kind of friend I tried to be, and thank you, Travis, I did finally use the DA. 
and then I immediately put it back in the box because I don't want to lose it again. After getting all of the major rust knocked down and the finish ready, I treated it with prep all, just a good general purpose prep all. It gets your surfaces prepped, ready to go. On the bare metal, I'm using an acid etching primer. It actually has acid in it and bites better into a fresh metal surface. For some of the other areas exhibiting a little bit more surface rust, I treated it again with just a epoxy rust stopping rust encapsulating primer. Once the acid etching primer and rust treating primer has been applied everywhere, I went ahead and started filling in some of the voids with a seam sealer. For the wheel arches and some of the other more difficult to brush into areas, I used a 3M single part seam sealer. Here you see me using the 3M brushable rubberized seam sealer. It matches the 70 style really well, depending on how well you brush it. It's a matter of mix up your can, dip your brush, brush the seam. Pretty simple. I got it, got it working pretty well here. I'm using a two inch chipping brush to brush it on because I'm not necessarily trying to match any finish. I am just trying to seam seal the seals lines with the seam sealer. Yes, that's that's what I'm doing. But I actually did find some really good success, especially at the firewall, of matching what the original Mopar seam sealer looked like. Now, as I was masking things off, getting ready to paint, I realized my rubber seals for the windows, front and back, were pretty well shot and were gonna need to get replaced. So rather than taping around and working around the glass, I went ahead and removed it by just cutting the seals out. In the front, my glass is delaminated. I could have just broke it out and not been very careful, but I was still being careful cutting the seal. I don't like dealing with broken glass. Once out, I cleaned things up and did my best to get the dust removed. And then I pulled the dashboard out. I still don't know if I'm gonna paint it or not, but with it out of the way, I was able to get full access to the firewall and get it cleaned up and ready to paint. Once I got that dash out, I found the cowl was filled to the brim with mouse house and insulation and just lots of, you know, living things. So I went through with the air, with the vacuum, with my hands and spent a whole lot and pulled pounds of mouse house out, which calls for one more round of compressed air and vacuuming the entire car. You do not want any loose debris left if you can avoid it when you're about to use a paint gun because it will find whatever debris you didn't get and lift it up and put it directly in your paint. Now finally comes time to mask everything off. And while yes, a normal sane person would be working to paint this beautiful exterior, I am working really hard to tape everything off to be able to apply plastic and protect the rust. I've spent hours and hours to put new sheet metal in and to paint the interior to protect the outside rust. So first things first, let's roll the car outside. I'm gonna say these GoPro chassis dollies, pinch weld dollies have been amazing. I got the car outside because I didn't wanna deal with paint on the inside. Now it's time to mix up paint. Again, I am using paint from Tractor Supply. This is an oil-based enamel made by Magic for tractors. It works incredibly well when you've got rough old metal that you're trying to protect. I've got the reducer, mixing it up, running it through a filter, realized the filter was slowing things down too much, so I bypassed it. Mixed in the reducer to the specification, 
and then put it in the gun outside. Now I'll say one reason I do like using oil-based enamel on paint like this when I'm trying to get a look like this, people will cut it with water. Farmers have cut the stuff with water, so when you sweat a little bit, it doesn't ruin your paint. I just kind of worked my way around. Ceiling, floors, firewalls, just slowly covered everything. Cracks and crevices. Probably my cracks, I'm sorry guys. It's just a lot of moving around and getting this paint on everything. Went through a gallon of this pretty quickly and got the car covered how I want it. I look great, don't I? Um, I knew better. I should have wore like my proper respirator instead of just a nuisance mask. Instead, I got, you know, some oil based enamel, blue mustache. We got blue around the eyes. Uh, my arms are blue. I'm blue. But we've got something blue that needs to be blue. And that is our duster. We've had a lot of good names. There's one the wife suggested, try hard, T-R-I, as in, you know, three try. I kind of like Cerebus. You know, Hades, three-headed dog, three different engines. You know, Cruster, Ruster, you know, those are pretty, pretty common. Freiburger has the crop duster. This could be the crap duster. I don't know. At any rate, it is now blue. I have got all of our wheel wells. We've got the front end. We've got the interior. We've got the firewall. We got the, the ceiling, which actually was never painted, touched up the deck lid. And we've got the trunk painted good enough. It, it, it was fun, made a mess. I'm covered in blue. It takes a, quite a while to dry. They actually call for 24 hours between coats. But in my experience, especially in like an application like this, one coat's more than enough. I do have the bottom of the car to still do, but we're gonna brush that on on the lift. Um, so that way I can get really good coverage and make sure everything's good underneath there. But for now, we are going to let this beauty bake and then unwrap it to reveal <laughs> the crappy all around it but i'm i'm excited guys it's blue i'm blue and my floor is blue it's looked like i've it, it, i don't think there's any smurfs left it, it looks like i've killed every last one of them and then did a very bad job of trying to clean up the fluids they leave behind when you crush smurfs but the good news is the duster is coated top to bottom, except for everywhere you're gonna actually see it. We've got all of the metal heavily coated in our oil-based enamel to try to stop any future or current rust in its tracks. And I'm gonna pull the plastic off and it's still gonna look rough. But I'm really excited because the thing we've been trying to do since the very beginning can actually finally go in the car wheel it in. I think I got the table in a position where it's all going to work. There. Our QA1 suspension, our front K member, the secret to changing all of our engines can finally actually go in the car. Let's see if I can get it low enough to get these bolts in and then we'll reposition and do control arms. <laughs> so much paint for it to just look awful. I'm weird. It's not that I necessarily love patina. Like there are certain cars that do look amazing with patina. I'm a much bigger fan of a car that looks like crap that is insanely fast. Oh, okay. You know, I'm a thinking. I gotta cut these brackets off. <laughs> that I just painted.
That was fun. Bound up and broke. Looks a little bit better. We have nice parts going on, finally. I mean, the floor is nice and all the stage three parts have been really nice from US Car Tool, but th these are just parts that bolt in, which, that's been a long time coming. All right, come on, let's get this bolted in and then I wanna unwrap it. I want to see if it looks as absolutely ridiculous as I think it's going to look. Okay. We can line these bad boys up and get them installed. All right, so we're done painting. So I can unwrap it and I want to see just how ridiculous the crappy right next to all the good new it's gonna look. I think it's as glorious as I'm hoping. Okay. Did I manage to protect my rust? It is looking like that's a yes. I mean, it would have been easier just to paint the whole outside, scuff it real quick, and just spray it with the enamel. Now, I know some of you really don't like patina stuff. I get it. It's a little overdone, but this isn't like a traditional patina build. You know, that's more, Johnny's more of your traditional patina build. This is more, I want it to still look like it literally came right out of the tree row scrap yard. And we're on the road course passing brand new cars. I'm assuming there's going to be at least one C8 entered during the LS LT fest, right? Oh, yep. Still looks bad. We'll finish unwrapping it. We'll charge some batteries. We'll take a walk around it tomorrow. Show you that front suspension too. Cause I don't know if you can hear outside, but it is storming really badly. Well, we've had a little more time lapse and we've got ourselves a duster. Well, let, 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 me, let me just show you. I'm gonna show it to you guys. It looks phenomenal with that suspension on it and some of those body parts back on it. Well, actually it looks ex almost exactly like it did before, but I, <laughs> I'm loving it. This was the look I wanted from the outside. It looks like something we literally have just drug out of the woods. 
We've got that QA3. You do have to trim a little bit for a level three. For the level two and basic bolt-ons, they bolt right in. You just have to trim that one shock bracket. And that amazing front end goes right on. We've got the doors hung back and I am really happy that they all line up correctly. Our body lines are exactly like they were before because what that tells us is we kept the chassis square, which is a big win. So I went ahead and doors are bolted back in. Fenders are just sitting on right now because they'll come on and off a couple times as we fit a few things. Listen, I understand it's dumb that I spent a week when I'm under a really tight build time frame painting so much for it to look like that on the outside and then this on the inside but i love it seriously like one of my favorite things in the world are cars that look terrible that are incredibly quick it, it's just fun you make the people who buy expensive mercedes and feel like they can drive realize that cars don't make a driver learn how to drive first and then we can take really crappy junk like this and go incredibly fast we do have our quarter windows fitted back in on this side and i was gonna put leaf springs in it i've got my leaf springs there i have the right shackle hangers i went and got the right bolts for it but i realized i made a mistake when i was looking up the mopar performance part numbers i saw super stock and in my head I was thinking modern super stock cars, which are about handling. In 1970 terms, super stock is about drag racing. So there's actually a huge difference left to right. It will actually jack the car up kind of crooked. So when you launch it, it sits level and isn't really what I need for road course. So I've ordered new leaf springs. I've got my engines. We've got some really big brand partners that I am incredibly grateful for. We just need to get the parts here. We've got brakes coming. We've got a transmission courtesy of Tremec coming. We have a whole lot of really awesome parts to fit all that stuff coming from American Powertrain. We have got an absolutely insane rear differential coming from Gear FX. But actually right now, one thing I am missing a whole lot of is little things like wiper motors and wiper blades and a working blower motor system there's a lot of parts i don't have with my free car um so i'm on my way to pick up a parts duster so i can um take parts off a car i'm spending a decent chunk of money to put it into the free one and that's today's car buying wisdom go out and spend good money on a good car to take it apart to put parts on your free car also one other real quick order of business Yes, I I totally missed the spelling error. It made it through design. I signed off on it. I have two printed shirts where, um, yes, the brand new shirt is the questionable garage. There's no E. However, you would say questionable without an E, questionable. Um, so if you happen to have already ordered and gotten one of the shirts before we corrected the spelling, Send me an email, I'll work on getting you a replacement, or just keep your super limited edition available for one week only misspelled t-shirt, because I was too excited about the design and totally missed the misspelled logo. I apologize, thank you to the guys who pointed it out in the comments. You know, when you don't sleep because you're building crazy stuff, things happen. But I appreciate you guys, as always, hanging out with me here in the shop where we get to do some really fun and crazy things. I just want to remind you guys to always make questionable choices and build the car you want to drive. Don't worry about what other people are thinking. Build it for you because you're the one driving it. Unless you're stancing a car out, please don't do that. Like it's dangerous or squatting. Stance or squat, no. Everything else, build it for you. Have fun. We'll see you next time.